Good morning, everyone. Uh, before we get started, I just want to point out Randall, if you didn't see him. Yeah. To be available for hugs later today. <laughs> uh, first, we'll go ahead and start with our employee recognition again. Barbara, if you don't mind coming up, and Mary. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. For the month of October, we will be celebrating 115 years of team member service. So the first person we're recognizing is an administrative assistant from the Assisted Living at Highland Lakes, Catherine Jediak, with one year of service. There she is. Also celebrating one year of service, we have our CFO, Debbie Medley. <laughs> Charge nurse in our assisted living, Jeannie Logan, celebrating one year of service. And our executive chef returning for his second stint with St. Mark Village, completing one year of service, we have Kyle Kane. I know Kyle's here. He's hiding. He's hiding. Okay. <laughs> um, celebrating two years of service, we have our plan ops director, Sean Payne. Also with two years of service, we have our dietary aid from Assisted Living, Diane Johnson. All dietary side. They're um, Three years of service, one of our CNAs from Assisted Living, Bessie Dame. With seven years of service, we have our sales marketing assistant, Lisette Encarnacion. <laughs> Celebrating seven years of service from our maintenance team, Alberto Crespo. With nine years of service, we have a dietary aid from our assisted living, Denise Alexander. <laughs> Twelve years of service, uh, our cook at Highland Lakes, we have Marcus Kraft. Fourteen years of service, we have our dining room coordinator at, um, in our health care center, Mirko Kojic. <laughs> also with 14 years of service, we have Michael M.J. Johnson, a cook here in the Nebraska campus. M.J.? And last but not least, we have celebrating 21 years of service, a dietary aid from our assisted living, Carmela Lane. All right, let's go back. All right, let's do the one again. Three years of service, our CNA from assisted living, Bessie Dame. Please, one more round of applause for everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. And 
going to ask Barbara to stay up here and recognize the new residents. Good morning. Again, it's my pleasure, and we have a long list of residents that moved in since the last forum, which was only two weeks ago. But <laughs> Okay, we have Mara Hendricks, 622. Would you just stand where you are? Mara, is Mara here? Okay, and then Christine Poor in 541. Hmm, slept in. Dennis and Debbie Magnus in 608 temporarily. <laughs> Pat and Dean Rabinstein in 133. Well, Jeff and Joe Wiebe in 216. Didn't anyone get the news? <laughs> oh. And Ron and Nancy Hughes in 646. <laughs> well, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> I want um, I want to encourage you to consider your contribution for the Employees Gift Fund. Um, we've been in the process for two weeks now, and we have until November 18th for you to donate. And you know that life wouldn't be life wouldn't be fun for us if we didn't have the employees here. And we thank them as we do, you know, at the forum. But let's remember them generously with our contributions. Thank you. So we didn't notify all the new residents that we were going to recognize them, and maybe that scared them off. Maybe next month we don't tell them. We'll try again. Um, so I, I told you a little bit about uh, the resident survey. I do have some preliminary results I'm going to share with you. Uh, I'll try and explain what the numbers mean best that I understand them. Uh, we're going to pick a couple that we know are issues and try and work with uh, the residents going forward on how to improve them. Oh, there's the first one up ready. So the way, the way you read this is this big line here is the score that we got. And you can't just say 84%, that sounds good. I like that number. You actually have to compare it to other CCRCs. That's what that 85% is. So in independent living, we got 84% on the question of how would you rate the staff. The average of CCRCs is 85. Overall, as a community, it was 79%. So when you take the care center and the IL together, it's 79%. IL alone is 84%. Okay. Now what's really interesting is, like I said, you don't want to look at just this number in a vacuum. You want to be able to compare it. And the reason why I say that is you jump down and look at how, how would you rate the food. We got a 71%. That sounds like a low number compared to 84 but look at what all the other CC, CCOs are at, 48%. Okay, so we know our food is, is the best that's out there. So that's how you want to compare. And then in recommending this facility to your friends and family, the IL said 78%, overall we said 77, the average is 80%. So there's some work for us to do. Hey Dylan, could you go to the next slide? I feel safe at St. Mark Village. Really positive, good, high scores. Uh, St. Mark Village feels like home, 82% on an average of 80%. So a little bit better than average, but I was surprised. I was hoping that that score would be a little bit higher. I'm satisfied with the management of St. Mark Village. Obviously, you can see I have some work to do. I'm at 77%. I need to be above 79%. I'm satisfied with the value uh, I receive for what I pay. We're a little bit better than the average, but again, I think that should be much, much higher. Um, and I think as we talk about things going forward, uh, that's more messaging. Uh, Dylan, again. The dining staff is friendly. I was surprised that everybody else thought that their staff was friendly. I've been to other CCRCs and I wouldn't agree with that. I, I, I expected this high score from us, but not from everyone else. I'm satisfied with the quality and consistency of the food. Again, 76% by itself looks low until you compare it to everyone else and you can see we're really doing well. And again, the dining staff service a little bit below average, which was interesting. Okay, Dylan, last slide. I'm satisfied with the billing accuracy. 
in IL it was 94%, but for the community as a whole, it was only 81%. So I'm working with Randall. Obviously, there's something going in on the care center that we need to look into. I'm satisfied with the maintenance request. Again, you can see a little bit below the average. That's an area we know we need to improve on. Uh, life enrichment surprised me as well. 78% was really surprising. I'm wondering if maybe not everybody understood that life enrichment was the same as activities. I think maybe there was some confusion there because I think Ellen does does much, much better job than the 78%. So I think that's some confusion. <laughs> and housekeeping and, and transportation. We knew housekeeping has been a, a struggle for a while. I think that's getting much, much better and will continue to improve under Jamie's leadership. Um, and transportation, we took this survey at the time, I think we only had one or two drivers and things were kind of falling apart. Uh, again, we have a transportation committee and we're gonna make that stronger. So the next step is, I gotta go back and pick one or two of these that we need to focus on, and then I'll try and get a, a focus group of residents and team members where we can meet and talk about possible solutions and try and work through and make that better for next year. Any questions I could kind of answer just on this, this high level? understanding of the questions. I, I will tell you the one thing that we did really, really well was the residents came out and took the survey. We were much higher than the average. So thank you very much. It shows that you're engaged and you care about what happens here. Thank you, Dylan. Okay. So everybody knows about the $6 million loan we took out. We've been talking about it. I went away. There it is. So when we first started looking at the issue, we needed a new roof and a new facade. And we got a quote for $6 million to do the new roof and the new facade. It didn't sound right to us, so we started looking at other vendors. And with that same loan, these, uh, this is all the stuff that we've been able to do or are going to be doing with that same loan. Now, I know a lot of this hasn't happened yet, um, but you're gonna start seeing a lot of activity right after Thanksgiving you'll start to see some things happening. So really impressed with the effort that Sean put in to help us find vendors. Uh, we've had some really, really good ones, like VFT who did the roof for us has been phenomenal, uh, and some that are a challenge. But uh, there's, there's a lot that we got done with that same, same amount of money. So I just kind of wanted to give you a visual of what that is. Um, starting in Thanksgiving, you'll start to see things ramp up and move pretty quickly. Thank you, Dylan. A couple, couple of updates. I did get to talk to our pool furniture couple, company down in Fort Myers uh, two days ago. They were not affected by the hurricane. So our ch <laughs> um, she was in tears on the phone because they've had so much trouble getting supplies and, and the workforce and that's why it's taken so long. Um, the chairs and the lounges are done we're just waiting for a couple of tables to be done, so we're expecting a week or two, we should see our pool furniture. Uh, the other thing we've done is we have two resident committees that we've started, the pet committee and the transportation committee. Uh, the pet committee, it's, it's, it's a much easier uh, problem, the solution, so we think we'll have an answer in the next week or two. We have one more meeting, I think, with the committee, and we'll wrap that one up. Uh, transportation committee is a much bigger, long-term problem, so we're taking our time to really kind of understand that and fix that. But until we do, uh, things will stay the way that they are. We did get a third driver onboarded and started, so it feels like it's stabilizing a little bit, but we do need to look at that whole policy, and we will be. We have another, we have a special guest today, Dick Martin. We're gonna come up and... So if you don't know, Dick is our chairman of the board. And last night, uh, we put in your mailbox some information about uh, donations and how it affects with the IRS. Uh, Matt Fresh's name is on there as a contact. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to him. But, but Dick wanted to talk a little bit about donations and the foundation moving forward. Thank you so much. First of all, I want to congratulate the shuffleboarders on what a great thing you did. And next year, it's winning at the state. How's that? Let's go all the way. They're good people. Second of all, I want to uh, introduce Gary Williamson. Gary, could you stand up, please? This is a guy that I've headed to the foundation, and as Doug just, Doug, oh, 
I'm, th I'm thinking of Matt. As Jeff just said, we have the, uh, a letter was given to you. We're asking that you continue to give this year because it's going to stretch things. That money is so well needed for the projects that we do. I'm going to donate my mom's name. She may not be here, but she's really here. She's looking at. She's keeping an eye on me, making sure I'm in line. And you probably, if you knew her, you knew that was true. But uh, continue to do that if you wouldn't mind. And or see Matt. He uh, he's helping us with that part of it. But I thank you so much. The employees, congratulations on each one of you for your tenure. We appreciate you, and we need you. So anyway, you sit in the audience and see Polder guys are. Eat Beetlejuice. <laughs> I'm waiting for his head to spin around. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Jeff. So, so Gary and Dick are working to set up the foundation. Uh, they spoke to an attorney. We believe the foundation will be organized by January of next year, um, and, and we'll announce that as soon as we're, we're able to. Um, the the Foundation board, I believe, is going to start off with three members, uh, Gary as the chairman, Dick as the representative from the board, and then we're going to be looking for a resident to be on that board as well. We think it's really, really important that we have resident representation on that board. So we're excited to see that going forward. Uh, sales. Matt, do you want to cover sales or do you want me to? Go ahead. Again, I didn't prep for this. <laughs> Wait. We didn't talk about it just like last time. You or me, you or me. So, you know, in sales, why, when I first started in sales was 21 years ago. And the one thing the manager told me is, you have highs, you have lows, just average it in the middle, right? Don't get too excited and don't get too down on it. So, of course, you know, now we're, we have all these move-ins and it's great news that um, pretty much everyone has moved in that deposited, which that doesn't always happen either. Sometimes people get, you know, cold feet and change their minds at some point. But it's great. We have all the move-ins. Uh, we have felt in the last month or so, Cindy is back there. Hi, Cindy. Um, but in the last three weeks to four weeks, we felt now another increase of activity. So we were kind of in a lull for a little bit there in, in August and September. And now we're back. And we're already talking about November. Like, we see November being a great month. But... Um, our occupancies were at 86 percent, so we have 38 uh, vacancies. So we're we're out of the 40s still, which is great news. We're in the 38s. We want to be at 28, of course, um, and that's really um, it's attainable. It really is. Uh, but what we found, uh, we've had two sales this month, but what we found is that the internet leads are actually good, and they're great information coming from that. So the new data, the new systems that we're looking at and the reports show us that they're effective. Um, the luncheons are still great, but the, uh, the, the urgency is there. So those leads coming from the internet, the urgency is there and we see them. Now we have to filter through a lot of stuff to get down to those, but what we've done has worked, I guess. Uh, we just need it to keep increasing, uh, which will get us to those 28 empty apartments which is where we want to be. So actually, we'd love to be at eight empty apartments, of course, but baby steps at a time. So in any ways, based upon giving, yeah, I mean, um, donations and whatnot, I mean, call me. Um, any ideas you may have um, and whatnot, the IRA distribution is what you're going to see in your mailbox, and it talks about how you call your financial advisor. They send a check directly here. It never goes into your bank account. So the IRA distributions... If you call your advisor, the money comes straight to us. It never touches your bank account, and it, it's not recorded on your tax return there. So you don't have to account for it like you normally would. But there's plenty of other ways to donate, you know, gifts of stock. You know, we've gotten several gifts of stock where people have said, you know, I don't want to sell this stock. You know, I've owned it for 25 years. Maybe you used to work for the company, and you don't want to sell it, right? is you're holding on to it because there's huge capital gains tax. You know, you're going to get whacked with taxes on it, so you don't want to sell this stock. Well, you can gift it. You can gift the stock. And again, it comes straight to us, and you not only do you avoid the capital gains, but you can get a tax deduction for um, several years, actually. You can split it up. So 
different ideas are out there. If anyone wants to talk about anything, please give me a call. Thank you. Uh, so Matt mentioned we only have uh, 30 open apartments. Uh, in the beginning of the year, we were about 41. We still also have 10 more move-ins scheduled this year that, that he didn't mention. So things, things are going better. We're on the right path. Uh, it was interesting. We were under the misconception that seniors didn't like technology. Uh, Dylan rolled out the Alexa. And Dylan, what do we have, 90 residents that signed up for it? About 90 residents that signed up for the Alexa. So if technology is good and it's easy to use, we, we know you want to use it, and we're seeing that from the prospective residents as well. So the website is going well, but we still have a lot more work to do to refine that, to make it better, so Matt and Cindy and the team can continue to make sales. But it is going in the right direction. We just have you know, a, more ways to go. Now, the reason why we're all here today, it's the quarterly forum, and it's time for the financials. Uh, Debbie has changed up the reporting a little bit. Uh, I know in the past it's been somewhat confusing, so the resident council said, listen, just make it simple. Tell us what's going on. Uh, we will schedule after this meetings for anyone who wants more information. We could spend as much time as you want going into the details. But this is just kind of a high level uh, financial um, slide to take a look at. There you go, Dave. OK, I hope everybody can see this now. All right, great. So as uh, Jeff talked about, we made this form a little simpler. We got some input, we listened to you. You said make the print bigger and then make it a little less confusing. So we took off the budget numbers, we took off last year's, and basically what we have is money in, money out, and the net of that. So the first line we have is our income line, and for the quarter ended 9.30, it's $5.9 million. It's a little less than what we expected due to higher vacancy rates, but that is improving. So we should see some improvement in that in the fourth quarter. So our income includes our rents, as well as any fees we get for taking care of people in our health centers. So those are the two numbers that go into that. We did get some news about our Medicaid and Medicare reimbursements that start October 1st. So the state of Florida, Medicaid, has given us an 8% increase in revenue which sounds great, however, there is a big string attached to that. What they've required us to do now is increase our minimum wage in our health center. Anybody that's associated with the health center has to be at a minimum wage of $15 an hour. So we looked at all our classes of employees and, and really most everyone touches the health center in some way. Really the only group that we said um, we could really exclude from that would be the servers in IL. And so we, we increased their hourly wage to $14 an hour. So now St. Mark Village has a minimum wage of $14 an hour. The state of Florida is at $11, but we are now at 14. So hopefully that will help us you know, be more competitive with our wages and it helped us attract better employees and keep them here. So that change um, will net us about $170,000 in additional revenues over the year. However, the increase in wages will be about $350,000. So wages and benefits anywhere from three hundred to $350,000 higher. So the net impact to us is about $180,000 negative. We also got our increase from uh, Medicare, that's 2.7%. Very low increase considering inflation is over 9% this year. Uh, Social Security went, over eight, uh, went up over 8% this past year. So that'll net us about another $70,000 in revenue. And so we're still at a negative $100,000 plus with this change. And like I said, there's really nothing we could do. We can't opt out of Medicaid. That's just not a choice for us because we have several res residents that uh, are on Medicaid for the health center. So um, uh, like I say, really um, we'll expect to see some increase from that, but the expenses will more than uh, increase the increase we get in revenue. So our expenses includes um, our Wages, benefits, supplies, um, utilities, wear and tear on our equipment, insurance. And as you all know, we um, are seeing a lot of pressures on costs. We really had um, a, a labor shortage that we experienced in the beginning of the year. We made a lot of market adjustments to uh, increase people's wages to be more competitive. And then now, of course, we have the increase that's been forced on us by Medicaid. 
So those costs continue to increase. Inflation is over 9% this year. So all our costs are increasing for supplies. Uh, our, we just got our insurance renewal. It went up 13% this year. We felt pretty lucky. We know a lot of people are seeing 30, 40, 50% increases. Luckily, we locked in before Hurricane Ian, but um, we did see a 13% increase in that. So those things netted out to um, a negative of $212,000 for the quarter. So basically, our expenses were higher than our revenue for those three months. If we look at our year-to-date income, we're at uh, almost $17.6 Our expenses are uh, a little over 17.3. So for the nine months ended, we're at a positive of $219,000. But we do expect this inflation to carry into 2023, possibly 2024. As you all know, we're continuing to see supply shortages. All those things drive prices up. So if you guys know of anything that the price has gone down, let us know. <laughs> We'll try to get on board with that. And as Jeff mentioned, we'll have another meeting where we go into more detail. We'll dive a little further into the, the numbers. But if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Nope. OK. Thank you. So hopefully everybody knows later today at 2 o'clock, we have the Halloween costume contest here in the chapel. I think it's the official start of the holiday season. Uh, so if you have not been resting up and taking your vitamins, start. I think it's going to be as um, much fun as it was last year. Dylan, did we pick a date with the, the concert? Is that, it's locked in. So if you remember last year, we had the Hall sisters come and sing for us. They'll be back December 8th this year. Um, and we're combining it with the friends and family party so that we can have better attendance. I thought that was a really, really fun event. Dylan works tirelessly on that. He does an amazing job. And this year, the vendors that have been working on our building all year are paying the full bill for that concert. So I thought that was the least they could do. So that, that's all I had. Is there any, any questions that we can answer for anyone? Yes, Leona. I wanted to clear something that Maya talked about. And he talked about when you uh, give your RMD, your required minimum um, distribution, that will, you will receive a 1040, I mean a 1099. And when you receive that, I would suggest that you talk to your tax person and be sure that they understand that that has been given to um, St. Mark Village or any other charity that you have given so that it is not added in as an income factor. Thank you. Norma? Good morning. You mentioned that there is a pet policy being revised, which is a good thing because what we received two months ago was really not a good thing. What I'm asking is that with the revisions, since the majority of residents here don't know because they don't have a pet, what the policy is, and it's an important issue. It's as important as shorts in the dining room, quite honestly. I would like to suggest and request that this be put to a community vote and let everybody see what the changes are because you advertise prominently as a pet friendly facility and some of the changes that I've seen and heard about are anything but friendly and they're uh, promoting segregation. Uh, unfortunately, it, we're not gonna be able to vote on everything. That's why we have a resident committee. Have we announced who's on the committee, Barbara? Maybe we could put that in the, in the lively marks. So everybody, if you have a comment, you could bring it to the committee, but it's not gonna be a community vote. It's gonna be with the committee. Well, the problem with that is that it's going to affect everybody in the community. And to not have them have a voice in it and an understanding of what's included is really not a good thing. Norma, everything we do every day affects everybody in the community. I can't vote on everything. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I, uh, you mentioned a little while ago about the pet committee having a meeting next week. I think the pet owners should be able to come to that meeting and express how they feel. 
You can talk to the, the committee members on your I, own. I don't know who they are. I said we'll put it in the live remarks. You know who it is. So you can speak to them. Okay. I agree. You need to have input. And you need to know who's on the committee. Right. But we can't all get together, all 275 of us, to make every decision. Okay. So any other questions? But I, I will tell, as we create these committees, these ones, we do want input. We do want people to, to give their feedback so we can get it, get it right. Um, I'll tell you, I, I can't make this decision. I love pets. I don't, I don't think of them as pets. I think of them as family members. Uh, my dog, Bear, goes with me everywhere. I can no longer eat out unless they have outside dining that my dog can go to because my wife insists. Um, but I also understand that not everybody else feels that way about my dog. So we have to have something where all of us can, can live with. So we're working to try and do that. And that's true of everything we do going forward. But by having residents on that committee and you can talk to them and, and give them their feedback and they could bring that to the committee to help make the decision is really the best way for us, us to do it. A any other questions? No questions? Please come back out. I think the two o'clock costume contest is gonna be a lot of fun. I'll be dressed up with Randall and Beetlejuice back here. Um, and we also, I think we have a singing a song? So please come back out at 2 o'clock and we'll see you then. Thank you.